The ancient Silk Road began here in the Chinese city of Xi'an, which was at the time a major political, economic, cultural, and imperial center. The first Qin Emperor unified the Chinese Empire in 221 BC. He ordered the use of standardized weights and measures and codified the law. These reforms laid foundations for economic and cultural exchange. People from across Eurasia began pouring into the region. More than 2,000 years ago, the Chinese diplomat Zhang Qian served as the imperial envoy and brought back reliable information about Central Asia. Fast forward to today, the legacy of the Asian trade routes and the bustling markets remain both vivid and well-preserved. The tracks of carriages carrying goods between China and outside the world can still be seen today. Archaeologists discovered these remains in 2006. Ceramics from the Tang Dynasty depict figures like this camel team used to carry goods along the Silk Road. Exquisitely carved tile shows a fusion of civilizations and the growing prosperity brought by trade. In essence, the Silk Road is not only a trade channel, it includes the mixing of different cultures, different paths and different ways of communication, and that is the spirit of the new Silk Road. 58 national chambers of commerce, millions of enterprises are working with the China Silk Road Chamber of International Commerce Organization to take full advantage of opportunities created by the new Silk Road. The Silk Road International Chamber of Commerce is a platform where countries can integrate resources, seek business partners and exchange business information. In 2016, we visited more than 10 countries and have earned full support from many countries' governments and business associations that have effectively promoted both the spread of commerce and culture. Experts say China's annual trade with countries along the route could reach $2.5 trillion within 10 years. In 2013, the Chang'an cargo train was launched to boost the trade between Western China and Central Asia. The city of Xi'an is benefiting from increased investment as it retakes its title as an important gateway into Central Asia. Liu Yang, CGTN, Shanxi Province.